don't start that clock. Folks, while we're waiting, make sure that you're tweeting at us. We're at IoT Evolution. I'm at Ken Briota. If you have complaints, comments, criticisms, anything you compliment tonight, so uh, feel free to drop those. Cool. Thanks. Hi, I'm Kevin Bromber. I'm the CEO of My Devices. And about three years ago, I gathered a team of developers to start building a connected devices platform. At the time, we didn't call it the Internet of Things. It was just obvious to me that everything in the world was going to get connected. So if it's electric, if it's a sensor, a motor, an actuator, even if it's a TV or a printer or a car, it was going to get connected. So we wanted to build a platform that could aggregate all those types of devices. But the one thing that I really wanted to concentrate on was simplifying things. And as IoT started to evolve, I started to look back in the history of all different types of technologies. Like when Salesforce.com came out with the CRM, everybody said, oh, that's too easy. It can't be powerful enough. But I disagree, and that's what we set out to do, was to simplify the creation of IoT projects. So whether it's for smart buildings or agriculture, industrial, metering, um, it has to be easy. Now, Having said that, we have to have something that's very powerful first. So for the past three years, what we had been developing was a complete my, uh, IoT platform with lots of capabilities. Now this doesn't look easy, but don't worry, I'll show you how it is easy. Um, but where you start first is by connecting devices in the middle, right? And we want to be able to connect any type of device. I don't care if it's at the edge or, it, or it aggregated in a gateway. If it's an actuator or a motor, it doesn't matter what it is, we want to be able to bring it in. Also, in terms of connectivity, if, it's, if you're at Starbucks and you have a phone and you're using NFC, or if you're in the car with Bluetooth, or you're in the house using Wi-Fi, or in the car cellular, or if you're out in the middle of the ocean using satellite, or LoRa, or Sigfox, or Zigbee, or Z-Wave, it doesn't matter how they connect. The key to this is that you have to have any connection and any device, so uh, connectivity agnostic and device agnostic. That's really important. Now, once you have all those devices aggregated, you want to be able to do things to them. So we built a very powerful scheduling engine. And it doesn't just live in a cloud, but also lives at the edge. So if you have locks that are scheduled to open and close at 6 a.m. and you've lost connectivity, they still need to work, okay? Um, we have very powerful visualization and analytics. And the visualization, being able to not just see real time, but also historical data so you can spot problems. Because when you're looking at uh, data over the course of a year and you all of a sudden you see a spike, you can anticipate the problems. As far as analytics are concerned, I didn't have a team that could build an entire business intelligence tool and I thought that would be worth our time. So I looked across the industry and I saw a product called Tableau, which I think is a great business intelligence tool and that's what we put on top of our platform. And a lot of our customers also use Tableau so they can mix their existing data with the new data that we bring together for power very powerful analytics. And of course, all IoT platforms have to have a rules engine. So we have a very powerful rules engine, but we're also going to show you how easy it is to use. Um, so if device A is a light and it's on, then control device B, turn the motor off. Uh, we also have a very powerful notification engine for iOS, Android, so SMS, emails, so like a temperature threshold. So if you exceed a temperature, then you'll get an SMS. But if you remember in the beginning, I said everything has to be easy. Right? So today we're actually announcing, actually I should say tomorrow because that's when it officially announces the world's first drag and drop IoT project builder. We call it Cayenne. And Cayenne simplifies the creation of IoT. So you can literally connect devices, create and control them. And the problem that we're solving is that most engineers and companies don't have the time, patience or budget to build an entire project from scratch. And if you look back in the history, like with websites 20 years ago, when people wanted to build websites, they were really ugly because guys were having to build everything themselves. And then all of a sudden WordPress came out and it became easy, right? So Cayenne is versatile because it's the first drag and drop IoT project builder. And like I said, it's like an easy to use website builder, but for IoT projects. So all the dashboards can be easily configured to show any device and any sensor. And Benny's actually standing off the stage. He's my product manager. He's gonna come up in a little bit. He's gonna show you actually the iPhone app in action, because it's not just in the cloud, but we also have iPhone and Android apps. Um, 
And what's really important here is being able to bring together device data from different manufacturers. So uh, Acer announced a partnership with us with their remote healthcare capabilities. And you can see we're mixing and matching different manufacturers, Omron, Netatmo, Mivatech, Whippies, Fitbit, because in an IoT solution, it's not gonna come from just one manufacturer. It's gonna be a collection of manufacturers, and something might be coming in through Wi-Fi, something might be coming in through LoRa or Sigfox. And that's because in this situation with remote healthcare, patients are unique, doctors are unique, and every IoT project is unique. And it's not just for healthcare, it's for all situations, industrial, energy, the whole deal. So, Benny, why don't you come on up? Plenty of time. Okay, so yes, we have a web dashboard, an iOS app, Android app, and what we've really done here is we've taken what would take companies and makers months to develop, and we've shrunk it down and put it into minutes, and I would even argue seconds. There's no specific training that is required to use Kyan, and any user at any level of proficiency can come into our platform. We have a very easy add device process, whether it's an actuator, extension, a sensor, a pulse width modulator, um, whether that sensor is temperature, motion, distance, pressure, and you just select the sensor you want to add, you can choose the sensor name, add a widget for it, an icon for the widget, and for some of the beginner users, we actually offer tutorials for each device that you can put into Kyan. For the more advanced users, we link the actual data sheet on that specific device, and that goes into some of the technical specifications. And we also offer access to the GPIO for direct access to the actual sensor itself. And what I'm gonna do now is go into our advanced rules engine, so our trigger logic. So if device A, uh, in this case I chose temperature, goes above or below a certain threshold, I think it's 96 degrees, then perform some action on device B. Turn on the fan, turn on the motor, or use our notification en engine to send a text message, an email, and we did not trust the demo gods in the past, so we're actually gonna view a trigger in action um, on a video feed, and the trigger I've set up is if I turn the light dimmer on past a certain threshold, then turn on the lamp. And the lamp is gonna be pointing towards a luminosity sensor that detects light. If that luminosity sensor goes above a certain threshold, then turn on the fan, and if the fan turns on, send me a text message. So in our iOS app, I'm just gonna to scroll to the associated widgets with the trigger I've set up, and I'm gonna now shoot to the video feed. So I've used the slider to um, turn on the LED, which should turn on the lamp, now you'll see the luminosity sensor increase from 400, it's at 1,000, 1,088, the fan turns on, and I'll receive a text message. And also notice on the iOS app, although I didn't physically change the widget state, those widgets do properly reflect the actual state of the device. And just to prove it, sensor fan is now on, and this is connected to DemoPi. And uh, we have a booth that's downstairs during the uh, expo. We'd love you guys to come on by and you can see it all working live. You can put your hands on it, you can try it. Um, so again, it's not just a demo, it's live. And tomorrow you'll be able to go to mydevices.com and sign up for free for Kion. And uh, thank you very much for allowing us to be here. Thank you.